Good morning. We celebrate today the ascension of the Lord. Vacation Bible School is five weeks away. We invite you to sign up your children who are in pre-kindergarten to the fifth grades for a fun week, June 19th through the 23rd. We would love to have more volunteers and extended care will be available until 6 p.m. each day. Regi registration forms are in the vestibules and online. The celebrant for this Mass is Father McDonald. The intention is for the repose of the soul of William Green. I am with you always, Jesus assures his disciples, even as he ascends to his Father in heaven. Indeed, he is with us here today. In the word, proclaim so that we may be enlightened. In the Eucharist, offered for us and received by us. In the priest, who presides over this celebration. And in each other, as we gather in his name. Jesus promised his disciples that he would not leave them orphans. We rely on that promise today and always as we seek to follow him and carry out our mission. So that there are no strangers among us, let us now stand and turn and greet one another. If you see someone you don't know, please introduce yourself. As we begin, please join in our entrance hymn in the blue hymnal, number 422, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 422. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We come now to this great feast of the church. On the 40th day after his resurrection, Jesus was taken from the sight of his disciples, not as the Eucharistic prayer will say, to abandon us, but rather to be present to us in a new way. He is present to us still, and one of the ways he's present is through his forgiveness of our sins.
for Jesus ascending to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus sitting at the Father's right hand. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, with us always, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, and after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. 
they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. is thrown to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For the King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon the hills, holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, for above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to, Ma to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the ages. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the fact that we have our Columbiettes in a, in a group here today uh, celebrating together Mass as uh, sisters in, in this uh, organization. We appreciate very much the good work you do, and we'll maybe do a little further speaking about you at the end of Mass, but welcome. And uh, the preacher was getting really warmed up, and uh, you know he was giving a homily or a sermon on alcohol and its dangers and so he said you know and if I had all the beer in the world I'd throw it in the river and if I had all the wine in the world I'd throw it in the river if I had all the whiskey in the world I'd throw it in the river he sits down there's a little bit of smoke coming out of his ears you know at the end and, and the leader of the song stands up and says please now turn in your hymnals to number 365 as we sing shall we gather at the river Now, I promised myself I would not be that kind of preacher <laughs> in, my, in my ministry. You know, uh, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, the source of all evils and everything. But today I want to, uh, to this week, in fact, uh, he, I, I've been hearing about this for a while, but this week the alarm really got raised for me. When I listened to a, a good hour and 20-minute podcast, by, uh, of an interview by Ezra Klein. I, I admire his analytical abilities to interview people. Uh, and he was interviewing Dr. Jean Twenge. And it was a discussion about the mental health crisis in our time. It's a crisis that afflicts young people especially. That people are reporting greater anxiety, stress, depression, and even despair. And, and uh, when they look at the trends, you know, there's, there's little cyclical times when things go up and down, and Klein was very careful to ask, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Why can you say this is the source of all this and not that? He was very good about that because what she has concluded from looking at the studies that have been taking place for decades, that since the year 2012, we have been seeing a spike in all these problems in mental health. And it has just increased as the years have gone by. So it precedes the pandemic. It was trending upward already. And as he's asking questions, he's trying, could this be a source? Could that be a source? And they, she says, well, we would see this if it was or that. But what they see, what she can only conclude, is that it is the rise of the smartphone and social media. And, uh, and so here he goes. Now he's going to take away our phones, you know, kind of thing. But, but um, the evidence is saying, you know, that 40% of teens will report that they are depressed in some way or anxious. Um, and that has been a growing amount uh, over the years. And it's reaching into the 20s and 30s now. And so it's a, it's a crisis that, that I've been hearing educators say something about for a while. And, and, uh, and it exists, I think. And so why cell phones and, and social media? Um, well, one thing that, that Twenge says is that when we're on our devices and when we're interacting via the, the net, uh, rather than in person, there's less personal interaction, less face-to-face -face interaction. People have less time. The pandemic probably really exaggerated that, but there's that less, less time we have. And I, you know, I think about how I go into restaurants and I'll see a couple or even a family sitting together at the same table, and they're scrolling. <laughs> you know? um, what's going on there? You know, 
Um, and then, you know, let's also face it that social media, as much as it also can connect us, can also be cruel with likes or dislikes, memes, ghosting, messaging, beauty ideals that aren't attainable, things like that, that that really cause anxiety and stress. What she also says is there's just generally speaking in our society a pessimism that seems to also be accompanying this. And I, and I think of how, you know, social media can also, or, or news and everything, can, can polarize us as well. And all the things that get posted and so forth that make us mad or, you know, aggrieved or whatever it might be or, or, or what have you, or divide us or naming of other sides of issues and so forth as being the wrong ones and evil ones. And uh, I've, I don't know how many people I've spoken to <coughs> who have said, I just don't look at the news anymore. It's too depressing. It makes me angry. Um, and so um, the researcher recommended a number of things. I found rather, rather striking. She says, we've got to regulate social media. Just flat out says it. We've got to. Um, and then, of course, she says some things about how you know, when we have our devices in our rooms at night, that we lose sleep. Lack of sleep leads to depression, or at least exaggerates mental health issues. So we says, if you need your your phone for your alarm clock, get an alarm clock. <laughs> you know, uh, leave the phone out of your room. Um, parents, she really says, you've got to be engaged in this, and uh, and so. The whole family ought to have rules about when we put these things aside and, and so forth every day. Um, and so you might be asking right now, okay, what does this have to do with the ascension? <laughs> you know, um, uh, as Jesus was taken from the sight of his disciples, uh, they first asked him, are you going to bring about the fullness of the kingdom now? Are you going to right all the wrongs? Are you going to solve all the problems? Are you going to bring about justice and, and, and uh, the reign of God on earth? And he says, that's not, that's not happening now. That's up to the Father, but it's not happening now because he's going to send them into mission. He wants them to be witnesses. You've got to take what you've experienced in me, and you've got to take it to the world. That gets repeated in the gospel. Go out and make disciples. And, and, um, and so... He, they ask the question, he, he's, he says, no, I'm not going to answer that question. I can't answer that question. And then he's taken from their sight. And, of course, we have this image of Christ rising up, floating up into the sky, and finally a cloud makes him disappear. Um, and and uh, many a, a theologian warns us, don't take that too literally, that, you know, he, that heaven is up there and he's got to go to it. You know, we see the, how, the, how the universe is structured nowadays, and there's no... We're not sure what direction that points in exactly when we point out towards the stars and, and the sky above us in this universe. But, but the point is, I think it's really, the point is made by the cloud. What's the cloud here? Is it simply the watery vapor in the sky or is it actually a reminiscence of the cloud that descended upon the tabernacle in the desert that was the symbol of the mysterious, awesome presence of God? And so his disappearing into the cloud is, is disappearing into that very same cloud, into God, into eternity, and in a new dimension, if you will, in, in, a, in a different existence, but one that is not unavailable to us at the same time. And in fact, he tells these disciples, go back in the city. You've got to wait first. Wait for the Spirit to come upon you, and then go out and be witnesses. And so he's available to us with the help of the Holy Spirit as well. And so uh, I think, you know, the, then at the very end of that passage, is the angels say to them, why are you looking up at the sky, at the clouds? Uh, I think they might be asking us today, why are you looking at the cloud in your hand so much? Why are you staring at it so much? Um, uh, let me see if I can make a few points. In the first reading, he says to wait for the Holy Spirit. We've got to have a spirit to animate us and, and bring to mind who Jesus is and to take that into the world. 
Well, living with a spirit within us, with God's Holy Spirit, is related to spirituality. And spirituality, when you say we are spiritual persons, we are people with a, with a God-given energy place within us that can be in tune with the very grace of God. It can be out of tune with it, too. We know. And that's our spirituality, too. Spirituality can be healthy. It can be unhealthy. It really is the sum total of what we do with our lives, the practices, the habits, the, the, the things that we do to direct that energy in us. That is our spirituality. And what hopes that we can open ourselves to the impulses, the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in what we do. But let me just say something about spirituality. Spirituality is that sum total of all that we do and how we, how we practice living the energy or you know, channeling the energy within us. Where is your energy going? What are you channeling it into? Is it balanced? Is it healthy? How much time do you put into your work and your study and the quality of that time? The time you have for recreation and rest, for sleep, for prayer, for family and friends, for volunteering and generosity, and for your phone. And, and, um, you know, is it out of balance? Does it need to be brought into a better balance? That's good stewardship of time and good spirituality. And one of the suggestions I've heard a long ago was that someone said that, you know, when we have our phones and our other devices, we ought to make sure that we're a good principle of stewardship, tithe 10% of that time we spend on our devices with something that nourishes our faith. Is everything all about connecting with friends or watching YouTube and cat videos and things like that? And, and believe me, cat videos do nourish me in terms of making me laugh. But what about things that also are available that nourish faith? And then secondly, in the second reading, you know, Paul speaks effusively of how, how this Christ brings us hope, brings us the riches of his inheritance, you know, that God has brought us a power for those who believe in and through him and uh, he enlightens the eyes of our heart through him so staying close to Christ asking ourselves how is Christ how am I reflecting Christ how am I looking to Christ to guide me but also the implication of all that is we cannot be pessimistic as Christians we have a hope that we cling to in Christ that says no matter what kind of evil is out there that can try to trample over and trample down good, God triumphs. We have something to share to this pessimistic, growing pessimistic world. And we might also then look at the question of how we might post things that are encouraging to tithe 10% of what we post to being things that are positive or that uplift the spirits of others. And then the gospel, which challenges us to be on mission. Go out into the world and, and make disciples. Well, when making disciples, I am absolutely convinced relationships are at the key. Uh, you know, it's the relationship with Christ, but it's brought to us by the relationship that we have with people who are in Christ, who proclaim him. And we have to constantly be working to build our relationships in family, with friendships, in church. And, and so things that, that are, if, if we're beginning to neglect or not invest ourselves in relationships, then we have another spirituality question that might need to be brought into better balance. And, and the other thing about the gospel is that, uh, is that it, it also uh, says, you know, they come and worship the Christ who's risen, but, but they doubt it. It's not some doubt, it says they doubt it. <laughs> and, I, and I think to myself, what is that all about? You know, why is Matthew including that? And, and uh, I don't quite know, but I will say this. People who doubt can still be put into mission by Christ. We can have questions, and Christ still uses us. And, of course, with doubts, we, see, we need to look for answers. If we have questions, we need to look for answers. 
Parents in particular, I suggest to you, if, I'm in, if I am placing a question in your head today, that you look for answers. Go check out that podcast. Read the book. David Brooks has an article that summarizes this, an op-ed. I, I hope I'm planting something here, if it's not already planted there, that it needs to be followed up on. And trust that if we await it, the spirit and the spirituality and the sense of mission will follow. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things. With confidence, we place our petitions before God who hears the prayers of our hearts. For the church, inspired by Jesus' command to make disciples of all nations, that we may convey to our families, friends, and neighbors the joy and peace we have found in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the nations of the world may grow in peace and unity, Accepting the primacy of God in all things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who yearn for meaning and purpose in their lives, that the Holy Spirit may lead them to Christ and guide them in carrying out the Christian mission, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who celebrated sacraments of initiation this Easter, that they may bear witness to God, Christ's ongoing presence in their lives in the way that they live, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation may reveal to us the presence of Christ in others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are ill, for those who are on our prayer list, and for those who have died, especially William Green, Skip Steele, and Mary Ann Simon, whom we entrust to God's loving care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> now in silence, we offer prayers for those we hold in our hearts, those who have asked for our prayers, and those who have no one to pray for them. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of heaven and earth, your Son, Jesus, sits at your right hand in glory. Hear and grant our prayers that we make to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts is in the red hymnal, number 628. Go make of all disciples. Red hymnal number 628. <laughs>
gifts are prepared, pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and humanity, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that 
partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jacques, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. So I say the word and my soul is shut away.
Our communion hymn is in the red hymnal, number 510, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Red hymnal, number 510.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries. Grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. Please be seated a moment. I'd like to ask Tony Zamorelli to come forward and say a few words about one of the best spiritual opportunities that we can put before you. Good morning. And even though they are, it's not the Knights of Columbus this morning. I'd like to talk to you about Casillo. C-U-R-S-I-L-L-O. How many here have experienced a Casillo weekend? How many of you have heard about Casillo? Well, that's exactly why I'm here to talk about it. Casillo started in the late 40s in Spain and then traveled throughout the world. Around the late 80s, early 90s, St. John Newman was active with Casillo groups. But since then, people have moved away and it became very silent. But with blessing of Father Sandy, we're trying to revitalize Casillo and St. John Newman. It's a four day, three night weekend that would definitely draw you closer to Jesus. The upcoming dates would be August 24th to the 27th for the men on September 1st, um, September 28th to October 1st for the ladies. You might ask you, well, what is Casillo? Well, it's a movement in the Catholic Church that draws you closer to Jesus. You might ask yourself, what's in it for me? Well, if you're interested in getting closer to Jesus, Casillo is definitely for you. And if you ask yourself, what's in it for others? Well, through your thoughts, words, and actions, they will grow closer to Jesus also. We would have information in the back of Cooney Hall and in the right side of the entrance going out. And at this time, I would like to ask the State Deputy of the Knights of Columbus to join me. The Knights came into it anyway. The Knights of Columbus started a new award this year, and it's for the Chaplain of the Year. Throughout the state of South Carolina, our Father Sandy was elected as the Chaplain of the Year for the Knights of Columbus. And now we would like to present him his award from Supreme. Oh, it's great to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you, thank you. Paul is from uh, Parish of Sumter. You're about to have a new church built there, too. And Dedication on dedic uh, second of next month. Second of next second of June. I'm going to be there, so I can take notes because we're going to do our own. <laughs> oh no, oh no. But uh, this was a awarded to me. Uh, weeks ago at the national at the state convention of the Knights of Columbus and Paul and Tony were both there but um, it's an honor and it's wonderful to be associated with uh, blessed uh, Michael McGivney father Michael McGivney is the founder of the Knights of Columbus and on the way towards sainthood and um, I, I accept this and, and uh, very humbly and uh, and and uh, just am touched by it and I think it's also an honor for our own council as well that there's good work being done here and I thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tony. He's going to make me go through it again. <laughs> I think at the five. Uh, but um, a couple things. Uh, last week we ran out of baby bottles for the baby bottle campaign for the birthright. We promise we'll have some more there next week for you. Uh, also, um, I, I cannot say enough about how Curcio can be a real watershed in one's faith journey. It is really, it's powerful. It's, it's, uh, it'll excite you about your faith again and, and be very renewing. So I encourage you, 
take a cursillo uh, is worthwhile. And uh, in about two or three weeks, we're going to be uh, starting up the chalice of precious blood again and, and make that available for partaking at Mass. And uh, at, we need more Eucharistic ministers as a result. We're going to be assigning more per Mass. So if you're interested in being an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion, uh, we'd be glad to train you and plug you into that. We appreciate your service. And lastly, I'd like just to acknowledge our Columbiettes. Let me just say a word of tribute to the Columbiettes. Uh, if, if relationship building is key to faith life, uh, then they're good at it. They're very good at it. I, uh, the Columbiettes are a sororal organization related to the Knights of Columbus, and they do service work. And part of that service is, of course, being friends to each other, supporting each other in good times and in bad. Uh, we had some Columbiettes uh, with Lucy's family just Friday evening as uh, she and her family were laying to rest her mother-in-law. And I've seen that over and over again, all the ways in which the Columbiettes uh, just are just there for each other, there for this parish, there for the poor as well. So thank you so much for the good work you do. that's everything. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 592, sent forth by God's blessing, number 592.